everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're looking at something a lot more expensive today on the channel. This is the new Microsoft Surface Book, and I think Microsoft has finally cracked the uh, tablet notebook hybrid with this device. I really wasn't a big fan of the Surface. I liked it, but it really wasn't something that I could see myself using. Uh, this one, I think, is because it is a uh, really innovative design that uh, makes a laptop a laptop, but also uh, turns it into a tablet when you want to do that. So I can hit the little key there. It will allow me to detach the, the uh, tablet portion here, and I can go about my way with now a full Windows tablet device on a fairly lightweight 13 and a half inch display. So really nice uh, kind of a combination here of a traditional laptop and a functional tablet. So they've done a nice job putting all this stuff together. Now this is not cheap, uh, mainly because they are focusing on another competitor that isn't cheap either, the MacBook Pro. So this uh, lines up very favorably uh, against that computer, especially the 13-inch MacBook Pro Retina. Uh, now this one, as configured, is $1,900. There is a, a slightly less expensive version, but I went with the uh, middle of the road here because if you pay a little bit more, you're going to get a discrete graphics processor inside the keyboard base. So you have an NVIDIA GPU uh, inside the base here that will activate when the whole system is put together like you see it, uh, which is a nice thing because if you are uh, driving more graphically intensive applications like video editing, uh, Photoshop, and other things that use GPU power, uh, this will give you a boost. As you'll see in a few minutes, it's not a huge boost. Uh, so gamers are going to be a little bit, actually a lot disappointed with this, primarily because this isn't really geared towards gamers. This is a productivity machine uh, geared towards people uh, like myself that typically buy MacBooks. So uh, you will get better gaming performance out of here with the GPU than you would uh, with a Surface device that just uses the Intel graphics, but uh, this is not a game playing machine. It's not really designed for that. Uh, so you will be able to find better performing gaming computers for less money. So just keep that in mind as we go through the rest of the review. I'll show you some gaming examples in a few minutes. Uh, so you saw how the tablet detaches, and when you're in the tablet mode, you can take out a pen that they give you with the device, hit the top of the pen there, it'll load up uh, Microsoft OneNote, and you can start uh, just writing on it as well. So it has a very good uh, wrist detection system here, so it'll uh, pick up what you're writing and not anything else. So really nice pen design, uh, really nice to work with. I could see this being really useful in Adobe Illustrator, uh, and other applications also that support uh, pens. So it's kind of nice. You can start working on a document on screen, uh, perhaps with a trackpad, and then uh, convert over to the tablet mode and get uh, much finer control. So really nice for uh, working with Photoshop, especially when you're trying to cut something out of an image. It really is nice, a very nice surface area here. And it's also not all that heavy to hold. It's a little bit ungainly because it is 13 and a half inches, but uh, it's fairly lightweight uh, and very thin, so it's not uh, as thick as maybe that Surface Pro 4 is. So it really lends itself well for this kind of work. You can even put it down on your desk, uh, work on an image, and then put it back uh, into the base to keep going on it. You do lose that GPU though when you disconnect, and I'll show you some interesting things that happen when you try to disconnect while the GPU is in, in, uh, in, in effect, but a uh, rather neat little uh, concept there. And you're going to lose some battery life when you're on display. So the display itself uh, can power the computer for about three or four hours. Uh, the whole package together, they say, will be 12 hours of video, although in my testing, just using it like you would normally use a productivity machine like this one, uh, you're looking at closer to eight or nine hours uh, under a normal kind of usage where you're doing some web browsing, uh, office documents, maybe a little bit of graphic design or something like that. Now the display on here is excellent, 3000 by 2000 in resolution, uh, that is 267 pixels per inch, so it definitely lines up uh, with what you might consider a retina display. Uh, very nice viewing angles here as you can see as well, so it's nice to look at. A uh, very accurate touch screen too, so you have all of the things you want in a tablet as well. Uh, so you can touch the screen, move through documents documents like so. Different aspect ratio than we usually see on PCs though. It is a 3 by 2 display uh, which is more square and the reason is is that when you're working on documents like this you want more room up and down. Uh, so you certainly want the width but you also want the height and this gives you a little bit more height and again uh, this is what MacBooks typically have on them because a lot of people who buy MacBooks are doing work with documents and that is what uh, you can do quite well with this one. So uh, really nice as you can see as I'm scrolling through this even with the i5 processor. So uh, very good for working on documents and doing uh, those sorts of things. I can resize images here and have everything uh, line up very nicely too. So a uh, good word processing platform, certainly a good desktop publishing platform and I really uh, do like the display, especially the aspect ratio is for doing work and everything else. However, uh, that is not going to do as well for gamers because often those games are geared towards more widescreen 16 by 9 displays. 
It's got a nice hinge design here also, so you can see how this uh, closes up here. Uh, there is a bit of a gap though between the keyboard and display, uh, but what's nice about this though is it gives you a rounded surface to carry it around with. So it actually, you actually have a really nice grip on it when you pick it up because it does kind of uh, round itself into your hand. My only gripe is that the display doesn't go back too far. Uh, so this is about where it stops, is right about here. So while this isn't bad for sitting on a desk and looking at it, if you're at a standing desk, sometimes you want a little bit more of a recline to the screen than uh, you're going to get out of here. And I also worry that if you push too far, you might create some issues too. Um, I don't know if it'll break off, but it doesn't feel, doesn't feel nice when you go back too far here. So I'd be very careful about that. It would've been cooler if this would go all the way flat uh, so you'd have a greater range of motion, but this is pretty much where it ends up. Now you can also take the screen off and flip it around too. So if you wanted to get the keyboard out of the way, but still wanted the uh, display propped up, you can do that. So you can basically put it into this uh, additional mode here where you can uh, get access to the touch screen and have it uh, resting against the keyboard. And you can flip it back down this way. So this is a really uniquely designed laptop. And we're talking a lot about its physical attributes, but that really is uh, what sets it apart. And quite frankly, that's a bulk of what you're paying for uh, because you can of course get higher performance computers that cost less, but uh, this is where you know some of the money is going is into this unique design. A couple more things to talk about on the attributes, and then we'll get into some more performance. Uh, this is where the pen goes. It's got a magnet that will stick to the side here, as you can see, so it just kind of attaches like so. So that is a very nice little feature there. Uh, the weight overall is about 3.3 pounds or so. Uh, so under four pounds, pretty much in line with where the higher end MacBooks are. A little bit more perhaps than some of the Ultrabooks we've looked at, but again, you're getting a very unique uh, kind of design here with some decent horsepower and a discrete GPU, which is something that a lot of the uh, other uh, Ultrabooks don't have out there. There are some ports, but most of them are on the keyboard dock. So you have two USB 3.0 ports here. You also have a memory card uh, that goes in right there if you have one from your camera or something. It sticks out a little bit, so I would not recommend this as a long-term storage location, but you can certainly get your pictures downloaded. On the other side, you've got a headphone jack on the screen. That's the only jack you got on the tablet that does have uh, Bluetooth support, so you can uh, get some devices connected wirelessly to it. This is the power adapter, and that goes in right here, and it's magnetic. Uh, so if your kid or your pet or somebody walks by and snags that cable, it'll just uh, pop right out on you. It will also plug in this way too, but when you have it plugged in this way, it blocks the mini display port plug here for plugging in external displays. You can get adapters to go to regular display port or HDMI, and although this looks like Thunderbolt that you see on the Mac, this is actually uh, just an external display port. Uh, the keyboard is really nice too. They've done a really nice job with this keyboard. A really nice travel on the keys as you can see. So you've got a nice depth to these keys. They feel really nice to type on. Uh, just a real pleasure to type on this thing. And the trackpad uh, is by far the best trackpad I have used on a Windows device to date. Uh, it feels exactly like my MacBook trackpad or very close to it. So I don't know, that might be bad if you don't like the Mac trackpad, but uh, this is a really good click pad. It is a mechanical click pad. So as you know, on the Mac, uh, they're now switching to that virtual one that kind of clicks back on you, even though it doesn't move at all. Uh, this one is mechanical, so you can't click way up at the top here, but uh, you can click pretty much from the middle on down and it's very responsive and a very, very nice uh, experience overall. Now, before we get into our performance benchmarks, I wanna show you what happens when something is using the GPU uh, and you wanna detach the screen. You will get a warning here that says, hey, resolve this before detaching. Uh, you've gotta close the application using the GPU before you're able to do that. So uh, the, the disconnection of the screen is not uh, mechanical from the key here. It's actually controlled by the operating system. It will release the latches uh, when it declares it is safe to do so. So if I close out uh, this application here, uh, you'll now see that we're able to detach. You can hear that click and we can detach it here. So that click is not coming when I push the key. It's actually coming when uh, the operating system releases the latches on the screen here. So I figured we could start with a little bit of video editing first. I've got Adobe Premiere loaded up here with some 4K footage I shot uh, in New York City last week so you can get a feel for how it can handle that. So I did render, pre-render it uh, for the format that I'm editing in. This is a 4K project both in and out. Uh, so you can see here it is able to play back that 4K video just fine. If you're doing nothing but dropping in clips like this, uh, it should be really efficient even with 4K video. So that's pretty nice to see. Uh, what I am gonna do though is do a quick little transition here between uh, one clip and the B-roll so you can get a better feel for how it can handle some of the more uh, demanding effects here. So we probably will see it lag a little bit on the first uh, playthrough uh, and then it'll speed up for the second one. So you saw that transition take effect there. Uh, we'll go back and play it back again and we'll see if it 
uh, speeds it up this time because it's got it in RAM. So there you go, it's a little bit faster. So you might see uh, some of this rendering go a little bit quicker if you had more RAM. I have eight gigs versus uh, 16, which you can get at the top level. I also have the i5 processor. There's also an i7 processor available uh, that might do a little bit better there. But you get a feel for uh, what you're able to do with this thing. I might be able to apply some blur here too. Let's see if we can uh, really kill it here. So uh, we're able to apply that effect, kind of scrub through in real time and take a look at it. Uh, this I don't expect to play back very well when we first go through it, but uh, same thing. It'll probably render into RAM and we'll get better performance moving forward, but uh, you are able to do some basic video editing. It's when you start working in some uh, effects that might tax things a little bit more uh, intensely than uh, basic editing is when you'll probably have to go to something more powerful, uh, especially perhaps with a more powerful GPU. Now you are able to play games on this device. As you can see, we're running Grand Theft Auto 5 right now. Uh, I'm getting 60 frames per second right now too, which is pretty good. Now I did have to turn a lot of settings down. This is not running at uh, 3000 by 2000. We have the resolution probably about a third of that right now. I'll put a link below to my uh, screenshots of my settings here so you can see exactly what I've uh, done to make this work. I actually ran the uh, GeForce Experience app, which uh, automatically kind of tuned things uh, best for this GPU. Now, Microsoft doesn't actually say what GPU is in here. It's just a uh, very generically labeled NVIDIA GPU, although a lot of people have been doing some testing online, and it doesn't line up with really the higher end uh, GPUs at the moment. This is very much a custom uh, job for Microsoft because this is a hot swappable GPU, essentially, uh, and that is going to require uh, some compromises in performance. Uh, it's also uh, only got a gigabyte of video RAM too, so you're not going to get uh, a lot of the graphical detail that you might want to see on something uh, in a gaming laptop. But if you're a casual gamer like me and just want to load up a game every once in a while like this and play it on the road, uh, you can do that. So that is what I did here. This is like the third time I've bought Grand Theft Auto 5. I had to download a save file just because I was sick of playing through it over and over again to get all of my uh, different devices at the same point in the game. But I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it. I mean, it's certainly not looking as good as it does on my uh, big gaming machine over there, but it's good enough for a mobile device. But again, you will see better performance on a, a gaming-centric laptop. And one of the tests that I like to run on these PCs is the 3D Mark CloudGate test, which you see running right here. And this is a, a good way to measure how well uh, a computer can process very intensive 3D uh, applications like this. And uh, what's interesting is on this computer, we can actually detach the screen and run it with that GPU attached and without. Uh, so on our test, we found that uh, with it attached, we got a score of 7,218. Uh, without it attached, we got an overall score of 5,451. So overall, uh, it's a boost of about 30% that you get with the GPU attached, and I would imagine you might see a better score with a faster i7 processor configured on uh, this computer as well. But uh, very interesting kind of to see what the disparity is between the two. And there are things that uh, sometimes the GPU will provide to you uh, that uh, might really help out significantly in a specific kind of application. But it looks like overall it's about a 30 or 40 percent boost in performance. All right, one last thing to check out. I wanted to show you some Kodi performance. It actually runs very, very nicely on here. Uh, we're going to pull a Blu-ray file off a network attached storage device in my basement wirelessly, so we'll see how it handles that. And as you can see, the movie spins right up here. Uh, no frame rate issues whatsoever. I'll skip ahead a little bit in the movie and you can see uh, just how fast you can move around. Even on wireless, it is really responding quite nicely. So very premium experience here. Uh, you'll notice though that because we have this very square display, uh, these widescreen movies, especially these 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio films like The Empire Strikes Back here, uh, will play in a very uh, narrow strip here. So it does remind me a little bit of watching movies on my uh, old Laserdisc player on my square television, but that's the same kind of issue that you'll have, of course, because uh, this is a square display. We've got a wide movie that we're trying to look at, but uh, the image quality on here is excellent. Uh, people have been asking lately about H.265, so I did pull down uh, this H.265 test file so you can see how this runs. This is a 4K file. Uh, seems to be running just fine at a decent frame rate uh, and no issues with decoding there beyond this green strip at the top, but I think that's more of a Kodi issue than anything else. So uh, I have to say that overall, this is a fantastic laptop. You know, they're really aiming at uh, building a Windows machine that matches the build quality that the Macs have been providing us for a while. And as a Mac user, uh, I can tell you that this is a really outstanding machine from that standpoint. So it is very nicely designed. Uh, it's not going to deliver the kind of gaming performance that uh, one might expect out of essentially a $2,000 laptop, but uh, a lot of that money went into industrial design here as well as the quality of the display. Uh, so sometimes you're paying for things beyond just performance here, and that is certainly the case uh, with this computer. But I have to say they've really nailed the whole aspect of uh, being able to detach the display really nicely. We can't probably do it right now because we are uh, embargoed with the uh, NVIDIA GeForce uh, chip right now running.
running Kodi probably, but uh, you do have the ability to very easily get that screen off and use it as a tablet. The uh, little uh, stylus here works exceptionally well at that, especially for doing Photoshop and some other things as well. Uh, really nice for editing documents, as you saw, uh, decent at editing video, and you can actually play some uh, demanding games on here if you get the settings tweaked appropriately. I probably would have liked to have seen a little bit more of a beefier GPU on here, although I, I guess that would really dramatically raise the price on it, um, but uh, it is very, very good for uh, the kinds of things that they're marketing this computer towards, which are the things that MacBook Pro users typically use them for. And I have to say, uh, being a MacBook Pro user of one from a couple of years ago, uh, this does feel very nice, even though it's just got the i5 on here. So of course you can uh, upgrade, you can't upgrade the RAM yourself, I don't believe. It looks like it's hard to get into this thing, but uh, you can buy it with 16 gigs and an i7 along with that GPU. The GPU is the same across the board, uh, but you can easily get yourself into a $3,000 uh, package here if you keep uh, configuring it in different ways. But I think what I got here is probably the best uh, option to get if you're in the market for a machine like this. And clearly if you want a Windows machine that feels and looks every bit as good as a Mac, uh, this one is it. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you find the channel helpful, you too can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. Visit lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.